There's clearly too much debt in China, but I'm not a believer in the view of that you should just put the brakes on in a very sudden way because I think that would actually uh, create more problems. Um, but China has to navigate a situation of kind of growing out of its debt. I would anticipate that you'll see probably um, more rigorous controls following the 19th Party Congress. Um, fundamentally, while I wouldn't want to underestimate mm. these challenges, I'm still, I'm still positive about the economic prospects um, uh, what in China. Le what leads you to that confidence? I'm spending a lot of time in the States at the moment, and you can hear some very negative uh, opinions about, you know, China's going to blow up with some sort of debt bubble and banking crisis and so on. I, I sort of don't see that happening. It could happen, but it would require some policy mistakes that I don't think are going to um, happen. Of course, there will be um, bumps and issues, and there is the opportunity, in a sense, to get it badly wrong. I don't think Chinese policymakers will. As a former banker, do you see China, I know they're intervening in the currency markets, are they a manipulator, though? They've added this third factor in the daily fixing, this counter-cyclical factor that a lot of economists and analysts are saying that this is putting the hand firmer on the tiller, more control at a time when they're talking about liberalizing the exchange market. I think there is an element to which they are exerting a greater degree of control. I think the idea, though, that you're either a manipulator or that you've got totally free foreign exchange markets is a sort of bit of an illusion. I think what China has done is just strengthened its tools by which it can do that. I don't think it's manipulating the market. What opportunities do you see with the Belt and Road? And as a banker, former banker, how is it all going to be paid for? Well, those are two different questions, yes. right? The first question, I think, um, one Belt, One Road is a really interesting opportunity, particularly in a time when the U.S. appears to be sort of stepping back from global leadership for China to uh, exert influence um, in really quite a creative and, and different way. The question of how it all gets paid for is um, a very good question um, because, of course, everybody wants everybody else to pay for to, it. To, <laughs> to, 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 to pay for it. The reality is China is going to have to pay for a chunk of it, yes. simply because China is the initiator and the single most powerful economic entity.